Hello, everybody, and welcome to Lesson 9 in the Ben and Boz Microsoft Excel video tutorial series. I'm Boz. I'm Ben. Let's go down today, man. It is a beautiful day in Collegeville. Sunny, little breeze to keep it cool. No place I'd rather be. Sitting in my garage and recording Excel videos. <laughs> what do we got today? Well, today, two main goals. We're going to work on some present value formulas and understanding those, and then also learn a couple new formatting techniques along the way. I'm looking forward to it. Those formatting techniques, uh, merging and centering cells, wrapping text. I don't do those a lot, but wow, when I do them, they're, they're really helpful. Uh, spell check, just quick and easy, but important to know. And then a couple new of our uh, you know, finance or present value formulas, present value and yield to maturity. That last one sounds fancy, yield to maturity, huh? <laughs> we'll have to wait and find out if it is fancy. All right, so let's read our little prompt here. Your company is looking at issuing a bond. The company's goal is to raise $5 million and they want a time... Uh-oh. You were in charge of creating this template. Why time. did you let it... Why did you do that? You put it way off to the... That's unreadable. Why did you do that? It's not unreadable. You just got to scroll over. What? Well, you see? But that's awful. Look. Well, I can read it. It's all right there. If you handed this to me and we're in the real world, print it out or whatever, I'd just hand it right back to you and say, come back when I can read it. Well, I'd have like three sheets stapled together, <laughs> stapled so it could be together. easy to read in that <laughs> case. Can you, can you fix this one for all me? Right. It's just, oh, man. <laughs> It's awful. So when this happens, and it happens all the time, what we want to do is wrap the text and merge and center the cells. And typically, I'll do the merge and center first. So basically, instead of all this being in, or in cell A3, like say I just type something in here, that all just, you know, this block goes away. Everything's in A3. What I want is to spread out all of this down three lines and all the way over to J. Right. So we'll do lines three through five. And J. And when I hit merge and center, this whole area that I have highlighted is just going to be one big cell, essentially. Mm -hmm. So in this case, this bottom one here on the home ribbon under alignment, you see we have the arrows going side to side. That is merge and center. If you click on that, all right, now this is all just one cell. If I lose, use the arrow keys to move out, move back in, this is just one big cell. I can see it. So we're halfway there because it's all in one cell. But as you can see, it's still hanging off the edge. I can't, I can't read it. I can't even see it anymore. So what I have to do now is wrap text. And again, on the home tab, tab in the alignment, it says A, B, C, and you see how the C is down below? That means wrap text. That's a pretty clever visual, isn't it? I like it. Absolutely. <laughs> so if I click that wrap text, now I have it. Gorgeous. It's, it's almost there. One last step. You can see the alignment mm -hmm. in this. This is like a bonus feature. We didn't tell them about last That's in, the, true. in the intro. In the alignment, it's centered right now, which is okay. But as you heard from Boz's tirade before, he's a stickler <laughs> for having things be exactly right. Yeah. So I want to align it left. Most you know, things are just aligned yeah. left. Sometimes you do want to center it here. Left align probably does look a little better. I think the only other thing I would say, can you just do me a favor, grab that uh, bond information in A1, and I'm making this up on the fly, Ben, uh, just copy that and create a new sheet within Microsoft Excel. Yeah. And what my point is going to be is you don't always have to do these together. So um, so grab that, yeah, just, just control, you know, hit the plus, uh, paste it in right there. Two different things. So if you just wanted to merge and center this, you could just highlight cells A1 and B1 and do the merge and center. All right, so you can do that in isolation. Go ahead and control Z to undo that one. Um, the other thing you can do is you could do the wrap text in isolation as well. So just go ahead and click wrap text, and then you could, you'd probably manually widen out the column a little bit. So sometimes you do them individually. Sometimes you do them together, like Ben did in the first example. That's all there I wanted to go. say. Made it up on the fly, and it worked. <laughs> it's always crossed my fingers when we do that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, so Boz, now I hand this to you. Are you good with it? Does it look good? Are we ready to start working on well, it? Well, I'm a little disappointed because, you know, I trusted you to come up with the plan, and not only did it look like garbage when you came in, but you didn't even do your spelling right. Uh oh, you know? what, so, what's wrong here? Well, the, company? the word company is spelled wrong. Oh. So why don't you just go ahead and then just fix that just by typing an A in there in company, right? Would you please just spell that right? Just type that A in and be no, done with it. No, I would not do that. Well, why not? I'm it's not spell doing it, that right? for you. Why and not? no, Boz, I'm not going to go to the review tab and <laughs> click ABC or spelling <laughs> either. That is way too long. But you see how when I hover over spelling, mm -hmm. it gives me uh, that little pop up there that says spelling F7. Yeah. I am going to hit F7. And look, oh, oh, there's another I one. I had yeah. a second typo in yeah. there. Uh oh. Yeah. So I typed rate wrong. So it suggests rate. I'll say, okay, let's change it to that. 
Then it asks me, does you want to check at the beginning? So it hasn't cycled all the way through yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hit yes in that case. And then it picks up company wasn't spelled right. And so I'll say company change. And now it says, hey, you're good to go. It's excited for me. Basel finally get off my back and the spell check <laughs> is done. Well, that's the point. It's like I told Ben, hey, just go spell the word company, right? But it's like, well, okay, we noticed there's a misspelling in there. We might as well just use this as an opportunity to spell check because we don't know what else could be misspelled within that document. That works. Uh, that feature in all Microsoft products uh, definitely do that. Yeah, it's a good shortcut to use. F7, add right. it to your repertoire. Yes. All right, so now let's get on to our actual problem. We are doing present value. If you remember last time, we went through some future value techniques, and present value is very similar. You can see the inputs in the present value formula are pretty close to um, the inputs from the future value formula. We're just going the opposite direction in this case. So our principal amount, our company wants to issue a bond, and we want to raise five million bucks. I'm going to put this as a negative five million. Because we're going to have to pay that back. So if, they, if people actually give us five million bucks now, we're going to have to pay that back someday. Exactly. As an we want our present value to be po uh, positive because that's going to say how much money we're getting today. All of these inputs, though, have to be negative to show we're paying that amount back. Yes. Stated rate. Um, the market rate is 8%, but we're issuing the bonds at a stated rate of 7%. So our stated rate is going to be 7%. Our annual interest payment, then, well, we can calculate that. These are annual bonds. And so five, or $5 million times 7% is going to give me 350000 It's already negative because my $5 million was negative. My term in years is going to be 30. Positive or negative on the 30 positive, there? Positive, th this, 30 one, this one has to be positive. Yes. <laughs> Only the dollar amounts will be negative, we should mm -hmm. say. And then the market rate is 8%. So, Boz, when you see this, before I do any sort of calculation, what do, you, what do you think about that present value? Is it going to be higher or lower to the five million, than the five million bucks? Well, if I'm looking at that one, if the bonds are only going to give me 7%, but I could go out in the market and get 8%, I'm not going to be willing as an investor to pay $5 million for those bonds. So I'm, I think the present value should come in a little bit less than $5 million. Perfect. So in future value, we wanted to make sure we had more than our contributions here, where it's a little bit more complicated, but comparing the rates, we can come up with an estimate saying that, all right, stated rate is below market rate, so we should have a lower present value than the five million bucks. Absolutely. All right, so for this one, equals PV for present value. Use the tab key to select it. And now my rate, am I going to use a market rate or the stated rate for this one, Boz? Uh, we uh, will use the market rate when we Perfect. go in and compute present value bonds. Yep. Market rate, 8%. Number of periods, 30. The payment amount, negative 350000 My future value is going to be negative $5 million. I have to pay back the whole thing at the end. And the type... Typically, bonds are end of period. Do you ever see bonds at the beginning of the period? No, I mean, sometimes they're twice a year, quarterly or something. But for simplicity in this one, we'll just do the zero end of period. All right. You'd almost never issue a bond that make your first payment immediately. You know, that's... Kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so now I have all my arguments. I'm not even going to close my parentheses, Boz. I'm just going to leave it open. All right. Hit enter, and it calculates... You didn't even have to close that one when you did that, huh? Wow, Correct. that's sweet. Most of the sweet. time... I don't even close the parentheses. <laughs> wow, that is cool. So I think I always do, but I'll, I'll learn that. I'll save about an eighth of a second every time. And I do when I'm trying to lead a good example, but <laughs> I mean, we're at lesson nine by now. I think they're ready for some of the advanced stuff. That's true. I like it. I like All right. It. So total present value. We know it's moving in the right direction here. And so we don't know we calculated it correctly, but Boz and I know we calculated it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We could prove it out. Let's mess with this one a little bit, Bob. Mm -hmm. What are some things, you're this company here, you want to raise five million bucks, and you see the total present value is only 4.4 .4 million. What are you going to change in this formula maybe to get up to your five million goal? Okay, well, um, we're probably, we can't change the market rate because that's dictated by the market, so the classic thing we would change would be the stated rate. Let's just put 8% for stated rate, and man, I hope it's an even five million. Hey, <laughs> there right, you go. It works. There you go. And, yep. you know, I'm feeling a little bit crazy. Let's pay out 9%. Should go higher than 5 million. And it'll be, hey, yeah. 5.5 million right there. Yep, absolutely. And then if you went back to 8% as an example, as long as the stated rate and the market rate are matching,
machine, you could do a term of 50 years as an example, and I don't think that five million should change. With any luck, it doesn't, right? So that uh, uh, so there's certain things you can play with from a company perspective. Perfect. Well, let's actually go back to the base case mm -hmm. scenario here. Let's move on to our rate function now, the second present value one. Sometimes we'll want to use this one if we're, say, looking at purchasing a bond, perhaps. And we might have to provide some money right away, say the $4.4 million, in order to get the $5 million at the end. And that interest rate, the market rate, isn't given to us necessarily, but we can calculate it using Excel. Yep, we want to calculate it and then compare it to what other investments are to decide if it's a good deal or not. So, Boz, before I even calculate this one, do you want to venture a guess as to what that rate is going to end up being? Well, I certainly hope it's going to be 8% the market rate. Otherwise, that means we messed something up earlier. So. And we did something wrong, and we need to change it. It wouldn't it. be the so, first time. <laughs> it would not, and it won't be the last time. Yeah. But we're not going to mess it up. It's going to be good. I hope not. So start typing in equals R A. T and I see rate is the first one that popped up, so I'll hit tab to select it. My number of periods is 30 years. The payment amount is 350,000. The present value is the total present value we calculated before of 4.4 million. The future value is going to be the 5 million you get back at the end. Type, this is going to be end of period as well, so it'll be zero. And then there is, if I click and drag this over so you can see it, there is one more function here of a guess. I've never used the guest, the, I, the I guess feature either, here, have so. you? I, I haven't. I just closed it off right here. And it All always right. works for me now. So I will close the parentheses and hit enter. And there Woo! you go, 8%. Wow. I feel better it. about this one. I feel much better about this one too. Mm -hmm. But this will change quite a bit if our present value changes. So any of these upper um, inputs change, then the rate will change. So let's just say the total present value here is going to be six million. Yep. Then our rate went down to 5.6%, which is what we'd expect if the stated rate is seven. Um, that means the market rate is only 5.6. It's gotta way. be below that stated rate. Absolutely. No, cool. It's, it's a fun way, just a quick way. That, I mean, that's, that's what the finance sites are doing behind the scenes when they're actually computing yields. Uh, would you refer to that one as kind of a yield to maturity? Yield to maturity fair, is what I would say for that one. one. Yep. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, that about covers it for today. We've gone through some present value formulas, learned some new formatting techniques through merge and center, wrapping text, and the spell check. I think that's about it. I think we did it, man. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in to Lesson 9 of our Microsoft Excel video tutorial series. We'll be back next time for Lesson 10, just kind of a little sneak peek. We're going to get into some data tables next time, Ben. Can't wait, man. We'll talk to you next time, everyone.